Ima. O you who believe, fear Allah and speak the most telling true words. Allah will perfect your works and forgive your sin. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And whoso obeys Allah and his messenger will truly achieve a great triumph. أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَيَا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ Dear brothers, dear sisters, today's khutbah is about an ayah from the Qur'an, an ayah that we all know about, and we might have heard, heard it recited from time to time. This ayah is in Surah Turad, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ That truly Allah alters not what's in a people, until they alter what is in themselves. In Allah la yugayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. This is what we call a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a law. It's a religious law. It's not only a religious law. It's a law of life. And it, this ayah is applicable not just on Muslims. It's applicable on everybody. إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Truly, Allah does not change the situation of people until and unless they change what is in themselves. And this ayah, is, if you go over it, you will see that this ayah has premises and has a conclusion. Has premises and has fruits has roots and has branches, has asal and has samara. The asal is what is in our hearts. The asal it is what is ma bi anfusihim, what is in themselves. And the fruits is what takes place in reality. Inna Allah la yugayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. And this ayah is an encompassing ayah because it is nakira fi siyaq al-umum. Inna Allah la yugayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. Truly Allah does not change what happens to people, the situation of people, the reality of people until they change what is in themselves. And as the ulama explained, this ayah works in the positive way as well in the negative way. It works that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the situation of people from better to worse until they change what is in themselves from better to worse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the situation from worse to better until they change what is in themselves from worse to better. This decision this choice that we make in ourselves is we see the fruits of it later on. And the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the people as a collective. Inna Allah la yugayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. But each and every soul has to change what's in, their, in themselves in order to see the results and the fruit in the collective. This applies to anything, applies to business, applies to education, applies to life in a family, in a community, in society. In business, you ask yourself, what is it I need to change today in order to see the fruits of my effort tomorrow? What is it that I need to change? It's an attitude issue. Once you have, you change your mental and your a shift in your thinking, then you can start seeing results. And this, this is not easy. Inna Allah la yugayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. This is not easy. It requires constant maintenance. It's not just because we're Muslims, everything is going to go in the right way. No. What's in our heart, what's in our mind, 
accumulates dust. And over time, I become complacent and we take things for granted. No, we need a vacuum cleaner, a vacuum cleaner that will go in our mind, will go in our hearts and restructures what's in there. And whatever dust, whatever bad thoughts, what is, whatever evil thoughts, whatever poor decisions we have made, we clean this out and we throw it away and we start rebuilding. We start from scratch. Every two, three years, we reevaluate ourselves and we start from scratch. That's also in learning. Every two, three years, we look at what we've learned and some things we've learned, mashallah, they're good. And some things we've learned, we can do it in a better, we can learn it in a better way. And some things we've learned from our teachers, jazahumullahu khayran, but no, those things need to change. And we keep improving ourselves. In ed we are now beginning the academic year in, in high school and in many, uh, in many colleges and universities. Whether we're students or teachers or businessmen or parents or family members or community in general. We look in what is in ourselves and anything that needs to be changed, anything that needs to be uh, cleaned, anything that needs to be rearranged, we do it now in order to see the the results of what we're doing later on. Inna Allah la yughayru ma, ma, anything, ma bi qawmin, hatta yughayru ma bi anfusin. Usually this applies from better to worse, that when things change toward the worse, it's because we have changed things in our heart. Either things related to our iman, or things related to our character traits, or things related to our behavior, that will start little by little cause a change. And our ulama say this applies in history, this applies in society. You look at the Roman Empire, you look at the Byzantine Empire, you look at the Persian Empire, you look at the Muslim dynasties, you look at the Chinese dynasties. Things happen in the right way, in this way. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusiyan. If we look at the seerah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's a manifestation of this ayah. The whole seerah is a result of this ayah. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusim. For 13 years, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent 13 years in Mecca changing what is in the hearts of people. Only, don't worry about society now. There will be a time when we have to address society. But now we have to change what is in our hearts. And he implanted in them correct beliefs and correct commitment. What is it that we're committed to the most? We are committed to the truth. And especially the truth, capital T, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what we call Iman. What is it that we are committed to the most? That's what he started with, alayhi salatu wasalam. And when we have these commitments, automatically, the character traits that come with these commitments starts manifesting in our life and starts manifesting in our family and in our community. And later on, we saw the fruits of this in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. And the opposite is also true. The opposite is also true. That after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, Sayyiduna Anas says, Ankarna kulubana. We, it's no longer the same. It's like we went from light to darkness. And we started seeing the effect of that. One of the muhaddisin, one of the scholars of hadith, his name is Sa'id ibn Iyas al-Jurayri al-Basri. Uh, he was from the, what they call the fourth generations, fourth tabaqat. And something happened to his memory during the plague, it's around 132 hijris. That's not far off from the death of the Prophet Sallallahu It's about 120, 130, and he lived a little longer than that, so 150 years. He made an observation. And when we look at his observation, we see that this observation is, is he, he's speaking as a psychologist. He's speaking as someone who's analyzing society, and he, he was able to observe something that took place from 
the death from the time of the death of the Prophet Sallallahu until his days. And of course, this is, this is relative. So the decline he saw is relative. At that time, if you see a slight decline, people will be alarmed. People will be shocked. Today, 90% of decline and nobody moves because we, we started, we, we got used to it. He says, radiyallahu anhu, he says, ta'amal al-qarn al-awwal bid-deen zamanan tawilan hatta raqqa al-deen. He said, people in the first generation, i.e. after the death of the Prophet sallallahu overwhelmingly, the majority of them interacted with each other based on deen. And deen is taken here in the widest sense of the word. Even people who have no religion, because of the interest they share, they start making things obligatory upon themselves. No, for this thing to happen, we need to abide by this. In order to avoid accidents, we need to have traffic lights. People make anything they need the most, they start obligating these things upon themselves or prohibiting these things upon themselves. And then this becomes their deen. In our deen, we have a complete system for what is the things that are being obligated on us and the things that are being prohibited and then anywhere in between. So he said, people in the first generation, everything they do is according to the teachings of Islam, according to the laws of Islam, according to the moral and ethical values of Islam. So what happens then? When we see change in society and we hope to uh, effect a change back, it's not a black and white. Because little changes, changes happen little by little. Then he said, ثُمَّ تَعَامَلَ الْقَرْنُ الثَّانِي بِالْوَفَاءِ زَمَانًا طَوِيلًا حَتَّى ضَعُفَ الْوَفَاءِ Next, people went to the default. So, the, in the first generation, people were interacting with each other according to deen. But then as new Muslims come, they brought with themselves character traits that, not, that are yet to be refined. They brought with, the, with um, um, you know, with coming into Islam, um, some attitudes and some ideas that need to be uh, changed or refined or tweaked. Dear brothers and sisters, please turn off your phone, put on silence, and don't look at the phone while we're in the prayer or in the khutbah. Jazakumullah khairan. So when this took place, people went to the next best thing they could, they could hold on to. What is that? It is the basic fabric of society. No society can function without it. That you have wafa toward your uhud, wafa toward your uqud, wafa toward your, your, your words and actions. To have wafa toward your promises, your covenants, your transactions. Can a society function without contracts uh, being fulfilled? Can a society function without people keeping their words? People will lose trust in everyone. So they went to the next best thing, which is to be loyal to your covenants, your promises, in your action, in your sayings, and in your actions. And they, they started interacting with each other based on that for a long time until even wafa became real. Even loyalty, even to be faithful, even to keep your word, it's no longer 100% of society doing this, but maybe 99% or 98%. For them, this is alarming. For us, 98% don't keep their word in our society. And then he said, So if deen became weak and wafa became weak, what's next? Next is muru'a. Next, People started interacting with each other based upon dignity and manhood and respectability. I.e., those things that would bring people disgrace if they were to violate 
not, not because of any other reasons, but because people still had honor and they still had dignity. And we see this maybe up, to, up until the 1950s, 1960s in certain parts of the world, also in this country. People abide by their word and treated other people with dignity and honor and respectability. And then he said, So we have deen, wafa, muru'a, what's next is haya, shame. So they started basing their interaction with one another upon shyness and shame. So some type of modesty still in them. And they don't want to bring shame upon themselves, upon their families, upon those around them by having dishonorable dealings with others. At least people had some shame. And then he said, what we call targhib and targhib. In our religion, we have targhib and targhib, i.e., what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Targhib, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is, sometimes he, he gives us instructions, and that's what's in it for you in paradise, in the hereafter. Targhib. Or targhib, you stop doing things out of fear because of what could happen in the hereafter. Here, and the people started interacting with each other based on targhib and targhib. What kind of targhib and targhib? The people found themselves in a situation where they, you know, they started interacting with one another based upon what they could, what they thought they could get out of the next person. What is it I can get out of this guy? And if they, if they stop doing something, it's because they fear what other people might do to them. So targhib and targhib in this dunya, without guidelines. Of course, at that time it was limited. In our time, it's, it's the majority of things. So people started interacting with one another based upon their ambitions, upon their whims, upon what they could get, the benefit they could get in this life. At the expense of moral thinking or moral moral um, guidelines of the religion or any moral guidelines that society have. So not based upon what Allah's religion is telling us to do, but based upon, okay, what I, you know, anything I can get out of you and anything you can get out of me, I try to avoid it. So not based upon wafa, not based upon muru'a. If we want people to go back to the, and to interact with each other as the first generation were interacting with each other, it's not going from rahba and rahba today. Today, everything is based on interests. If our interests are aligned, we're together. If our interests are misaligned, we say goodbye. Everybody goes in their own way. We can't go from rahba and rahba to deen in one shot. You have to strengthen the haya. We have to strengthen the muru'a. We have to revive these rare qualities today that are no longer in existence or they exist maybe among certain group in to various degrees. What decisions, what choices or I have to make that mental decision in order for the process to start kicking. And what changes do I need to make in myself today so that I can see a better change tomorrow?